And now, reporting for Outside the Lines, Bob Lee. Just beneath political correctness and platitude lurks that visceral honesty we do not often see nor hear from public figures. But last night, Timmy Hardaway took us there. The five-time NBA All-Star, out of the league now for four seasons, matter-of-factly described as admitted homophobia. This on a Miami radio talk show. John Amici's recent coming out started this entire conversation about gay athletes and professional locker rooms. And Hardaway's comments certainly moves that talk to a very real and personal level. Tim Hardaway, last question before we let you go. How do you deal with a gay teammate? Oh, uh, first of all, I wouldn't want him on my team. And um, second of all, you know, if he was on my team, I, I would, you know, really distance myself from him because um, uh, uh, I don't think that's right. And, you know, I, I, it, I don't think that, you know, he should be in a locker room while we're in a locker room. And it's just a whole lot of other things. So I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even be a part of that, but you know, it's stuff like that going on, and there's a lot of uh, other people I hear like that that's still in the closet and don't want to come out the closet. But you know, um, I, I just leave that alone. So what though? What could you do? You don't have a recourse. You what? You ask for a trade? Yeah, uh, or I ask for him to get traded. <laughs> you know, one another, or if he, you know, I. I it, it, something has has to give, and um, I think uh, the majority of the players uh, would ask for him to be traded, or they would want to get traded. People will feel uncomfortable with that. I mean, don't nobody feel comfortable um, if you're not gay? No, nobody in that locker room will feel comfortable with that person on on your team. What you're saying there, though, Timmy, is flatly homophobic, right? It's just flat. It's it's bigotry. Well, you know, I, you know, I hate gay people, so. Um, um, you know, I, I let it be known. I don't like gay people. I don't like to be around gay people. I don't, you know, I, I, yeah, I'm, homo, I'm homophobic. I don't, I don't, I don't like it. It, it shouldn't be in the world for that or in the, in the United States for it. So, yeah, I, I don't like it. Shortly thereafter, Hardaway issued a statement through his agent apologizing for the remarks. He called them, in his own words, offensive. But then in a subsequent phone interview with a Miami television station, Hardaway, speaking of homosexuality, said, quote, I don't condone it, and if people got problems with it, I'm sorry. I'm saying I can't stand being around that person knowing that they sleep with someone of the same sex, end quote. Hardaway made those comments while in Las Vegas, appearing on behalf of the NBA at community events related to this weekend's All-Star Game. Now, the league then removed him from the roster of former players working with the league in that capacity. Commissioner David Stern saying, quote, it is inappropriate for Tim Hardaway to be representing us given the disparity between his views and ours. This entire story began yesterday on Dan Levitard's program on Sports Talk 790, The Ticket in Miami. And Dan joins us now. Uh, you know Timmy from his time with the Heat. You've covered him. Did you have any idea when you posed the question to suggest that he would answer in this manner? No, zero. I mean, Timmy's immensely likable. I've always enjoyed my time with Tim Hardaway. Not only that, he's always been a blunt instrument when it comes to answering questions. He's totally honest and doesn't do a lot in the way of political correctness. But no, I had no idea. We've been asking this question ever since John Amici has thrown more coals in the furnace on this story and gotten the conversation started and we've been asking every guest and once he answered this way uh, I you know my jaw hung open listening to the response I didn't even know what to do it was so shocking I would suspect that the people that you ask this question publicly you get a lot of platitudes and political correctness here uh, what has he done to the to the debate here in this country by answering in this fashion he has done exactly what John Amici wrote this book for. He has gotten the conversation started. People are taking sides on this issue. People are talking about, hey, well, how comfortable would you be with a homosexual showering in your locker room? And he's given a voice to something that is not that unusual. You're not used to hearing it in the mainstream, certainly. You're not used to hearing it from famous people, but Tim Hardaway has given voice. He's not alone on this. His viewpoint, he is not alone on this, and given just the unsolicited response that I've heard on this, people are taking sides on this. How, not how just, are you hearing that today? Email, phone calls? Oh, just an enormous amount of email in which people are taking sides. They're holding up the Bible. They're saying Tim Hardaway has a right to free speech, and he does have a right to free speech. And they're, they're supporting Tim Hardaway 
in the same way that they were supporting John Amici earlier this week. It's it's split. It's not the, my reaction. My experience has been split. It has not been lopsided. Now those are the f people who watch the NBA who buy the tickets. Let's try and get inside the the locker room culture just a little bit. A couple of weeks ago when this all came out, LeBron uh, James likened the idea of, of a gay on your team to being that of one of trust among teammates. You'd like to know because of the locker room culture. He has since refined those remarks. What do you think in their heart of hearts how this is playing in NBA locker rooms? I would think that they're fine answering the question in the theoretical. I think they would have a lot of difficulty with the reality of the situation, with it actually happening. You can sit here and tell me that you would vote for a female president or a black president, but in the privacy of the voting booth, I don't know if that's the way you're going to feel. And I think what you're hearing is a lot of guys smarter than Tim Hardaway about how they're packaging stuff, saying, talking about their discomfort, but I'm not sure that if I presented them with a teammate and with reporters streaming through the locker room for Out Magazine or Advocate or homo flamboyantly homosexual reporters coming into the locker room and asking you questions about who you think is hot or whether you're attracted to a teammate, mm -hmm. I think the experience of it w would be far different than it, as we look at it now, naively and utopian. Dan Levitard in Miami, I appreciate it. All right, Bob. John Amici put this topic in the national sports dialogue with his recent decision to come out in his new book, Man in the Middle. And for purposes of full disclosure, we tell you it's published by ESPN Books. John joins us on the phone now. John, what has uh, the way that Tim Hardaway has expressed his opinion done, do you think, to the chances of someone like yourself coming out and making the same disclosure? I, I think it minimizes his remarks to imagine that the impact of them is on one of the one or two or however many of the 300 or so men in the NBA. When people make hateful remarks, like the remarks that Tim Hardaway made, he has made, uh, he has created an atmosphere where hundreds of thousands of young people feel less safe today, physically, psychologically, emotionally, than they felt yesterday. He's created an environment where hundreds of thousands of young people who use these anti-gay slurs are now feeling more emboldened than ever before. What has been the reaction that you've received? Uh, I know you have a website, you get a lot of email and feedback, you've been on a media tour since Hardaway's remarks in the last 24 hours. Well, I can tell you that prior to Tim's remarks, I was, had received an overwhelmingly positive um, response from people. Uh, but Tim's remark has been a lightning rod. And since that time, I have had a lot of, an awful lot of disturbing emails off people, including ones that suggest they would like to meet me so they could shove a knife down my throat. You're not taking those seriously, or are you? It, it doesn't matter whether it's serious or not. Whether they mean it literally or metaphorically, I don't think anybody mm -hmm. could take that as a positive thing. You have said that, and uh, one word that you're not particularly in love with, you're not looking for tolerance. Uh, what are you looking for here? Uh, tolerance? You don't tolerate things. You, don't, you shouldn't be in a situation where you're tolerating people. I think if you ask the black community whether they should be tolerated, I think they would probably, and rightly so, we would be a little outraged. Um, we shouldn't be talking about tolerance. We should be talking about creating an atmosphere where the natural diversity of things is embraced. We are in a time right now, an era, when we are confronted by all kinds of things and the only way that we're going to be able to move forward is by understanding that diversity is part of the natural order. You don't have to like it to embrace it. You don't have to want to endorse it or become part of that minority to embrace it. But we need to have a more, um, we need to have a conversation about this that rises above the fifth grade level. Now, the irony here is that uh, Hardaway makes his remarks. You've been out in the public uh, discourse for about a week. Mark Cuban, owner of the Mavericks, said if a gay player came out, an active gay player, he'd be a hero. He would make millions. So here you've got the opposite ends of the spectrum, uh, Hardaway's remarks and Cuban's idea. You know, I, I have a lot of time for Mark Cuban. Um, I think he's one of the most amazing entrepreneurs. Uh, however, you have to understand that the coming out process is not just about financial risk. It is about financial risk. Uh, given that in 33 states in this country you can be fired for being gay. But it's not just about the financial risk. It's about the emotional and psychological impact of doing that. It's about being subjected to the kind of abuse that Tim Hardaway has spouted today. 
John Amici, we will see you this evening on Sports Center. Thanks a great deal. Thank you. And today's first report poll question. Do you believe that Tim Hardaway's comments reflect the opinion of a majority of NBA players? You can vote online, click the ESPN drop-down menu, and then on our Outside the Lines interactive page, you can vote in that poll, you can send us email, and you can sign up for our daily program alert.